automatic crab loot. New Exorcist Kings. Hey guys, what's up? So we have a new update on Advanced Server featuring Lolita, Hayabusa, and the Crab. First up, we have the Crab and their loots. If you kill a crab, the loot will automatically fly right to you. No need to pick them up. This is an advantage especially for gold laners. No more risk of getting ganked just to collect resources. The developer said picking up the loots is annoying, so they streamlined it. So same rewards and less hassle. Next on the list is Ayabusa, where he can now use the Retribution spell during his ultimate. As you can see, the Retribution is active while using Shadow Kill. He now joins the ranks of heroes like Ling and Lancelot, who can utilize Retribution during their invincibility state. This evens the playing field and opens up some exciting possibilities for our Hayabusa players. The only problem is that it's hard to focus on the objective's HP during his ultimate. Now let's talk about Lolita, where her shield just got a serious upgrade. They've doubled the amount of shield from each passive stack, and it can now scale with magic power stats. This opens up interesting build options, specifically Flask of the Oasis. There are some adjustments though. The maximum stacks are down to 3, and the refresh timer is longer. Basically, the end result is the same as before. The only difference is it gives more shield for each stack. So, how is it a buff on Lolita? Well, if you remember from the last patch, they added a new feature where using any skill will give her one stack of her shield passive. So with a quick 1-2 combo, Lolita instantly gains 2 stacks, offering immediate protection for herself and her allies. It gives her the ability to save dying teammates simply by using any skill. Think of it like Akai's passive, but Lolita can share it with teammates. However, there are also minor changes to her other skills. First skill will now have a fixed cooldown with lower mana cost. Meanwhile, second skill gets lower cooldown and less shield base value. Now let's zip on over to Chip, who's getting a double dose of buff. First up, his first skill is packing a meaner punch with increased damage. And then his special skill cooldown has been slashed in half, from 40 down to 20 seconds. There is a small catch though. Cooldown reduction items won't affect the special skill anymore. But with the cooldown cut in half, Chip's mobility is still getting a significant boost. So you can still use cooldown reduction items, but only his three main skills will get affected. Up next, the Fierce Masha gets an adjustment on her power curve. Her basic attacks will now pack a fiercer punch in the early game, helping her dominate lanes. However, this early game power comes at a cost with a slightly weaker damage at late game. Ultimate also gets a higher base damage and improved attack scaling stats. According to the developers, they felt she was a bit too weak early on, so this change aims to give her a smoother power curve. Next, we have the adjustment on edit. With the recent defense equipment nerf affecting her ultimate damage, they had to increase the conversion of hybrid defense. From 3.2 to now 3.5% defense to magic power conversion. Next is the nerf on Minotaur. The last patch on advanced server made his enraged heal too strong against multi-hit attacks. To balance, the heal mechanics will now be the same as official server but with a lower damage scaling. As you can see, the heal is now based on the basic attack damage that he receives. Another nerf is the weaker heal on his second skill. Next is the nerf on Harry. The developers think the reduced force swing of his first skill was too much of a boost, so in return, they will lower the damage of the skill. It's only a small nerf, so don't worry. Next is another adjustment on Julian's enhanced basic attacks. They've increased it to 100% magic power bonus. Compared to official server, this is a nerf since he already has 120% there. Next is the adjustment on Carmilla. Her first skill and basic attack range has been adjusted so that the skill will also hit enemies when she's doing basic attacks. Here's a comparison on her official server version. Next is the buff on Esmeralda. They improved her defense growth stats similar to other tanks last week. It's a way to cope up with the weaker defense items on advanced server. Next is the new hero Zushin. 
more nerfs on her stats, lower movement speed while first skill will give fewer stacks, and her second skill damage is also weakened. We'll have to test her once again to see if she's too weak or balanced. Next are the item adjustments. After the merging of Bloodlust Axe and Queen Swings, it has led to an item gap for heroes that prefer spell vamp in the early game. To fix this issue, they will add a fixed spell vamp stat on War Axe. This will serve as the early item for spell vamp heroes. To balance, the unique passive will no longer give spell vamp. Meanwhile, Queen Swings will now have lower spell vamp and the price is reduced by 300 gold. Next is the new item, Malefic God. They've increased its stats so that it can compete with the item Wind of Nature. It will now increase your basic attack range for 3 seconds and its cooldown has been cut by half. The movement boost is also increased as well as its attack stats. The new item Wishing Lantern will now deal damage on the target's current HP. So it's now similar to Demon Hunter Sword, giving you more damage against full HP enemies. Harley will definitely love this adjustment. Next is the shortened cooldown of the shield from Blood Wings. From 30 down to 20 seconds. Last one is the Great Dragon Spear, where you'll now gain 30% movement speed instead of 15. To end the video, here are the new Exorcist skins of Granger and Hayabusa. Based on the page, the first research event is on May 25. And that's it for our weekly advanced server update. Do you like the crab adjustments? Share your thoughts in the comment section. That's all for this video. Stay safe and thank you for watching.